Education has always been really important to me. Um, I would say it started with my father. Um, he grew up in some financial difficulties. Um, he grew up in India and it wasn't always the, the best financial circumstances. And he learned early on that if he wanted to be successful and to take care of his family, um, that education was the ticket. So he studied hard, got scholarships from his primary school all the way to college. He attended some of the best colleges in, in India because he was on scholarship and because he did so well. And so I think when he came to the States, he understood firsthand that education is the key to success. It is a social equalizer and it is the opportunity to have social mobility. Um, and both he and my mom really had a deep sense of respect for what education is able to, to give. So they definitely instilled in me and my siblings a deep respect for education. Um, they were able to because they had the means to give us some of the best opportunities um, to the greatest teachers and the greatest schools, so we were lucky. But I think that, that being able to see what my father was able to do through his education, um, I have a deep respect for that. Welcome, welcome all to the first annual educational Brain Bowl, the Brain Bowl about education. This episode's grand prize is a brand new Toyota Sienna. Let's meet our new contestants. Laura. Hello. Lauren. Oh, hi. Victoria. Hello. All right, Vicki, first question for 10 points. What is education? That's easy. Education is the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction. Correct. Laura, next question. Also for 10 points. What is education in simpler words? Education is knowledge, skill, and development gained from study or practice. Also correct. Lauren, you're up. Name three different types of education. That's easy. Uh, vocational, collegiate, and trade school. Okay, Vicki, looks like it's, we're back to you. For another 20 points, please answer the following question. The United States ranks number blank in education. 20. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Laura, for 20 points. Um, I was going to say 13, but I think I'm going to go with 14 because my horoscope today says my lucky number. Correct. 20 points to Laura. Lauren, for 20 points, what does the OECD Program for International Student Assessment do? Uh, it ranks 15-year-olds across seven different countries in reading, math, and science. Correct. And that concludes round one. The scores are Lauren and Laura tied for the first place with 30 points and trailing behind with 10 points, Victoria. Vicki, since you are currently in last place, you will get to answer the first question on culture, right after this. In the world today, some countries believe that there is no investment in giving women education. In most countries, both the public and private sectors continue to be dominated by men, leading parents to ask themselves, why bother educating our girls if they will never make it anyway? In these countries, it is more important for women to get married and have children. It is a risk for girls to even attend school. Schools fail to protect the basic rights and dignity of girls. Violence includes rape, sexual harassment, physical and psychological intimidation, teasing, and threats. It may occur on the way to school or within the school itself and is perpetuated by teachers, parents, persons of perceived authority, and fellow students.
Okay, Vicky. First question. What is culture? Culture is the belief, customs, arts, etc. of a particular society, group, place, or, or time. In the world, who is primarily more educated, women or men? The whole video was about... Ugh, never mind. Lauren, why are some women denied education? They consider it a waste of money and resources. Girls are considered expendable. The only thing they're supposed to do is take care of the house and home, get married, raise children. We are now going to show a short video. Number 25. Today, about 61 million primary school aged children are out of school. Number 24. About 40 million of these children live in poor, conflict afflicted countries. Number 23. An estimated 250 million children cannot read, write, or count well. Number 22. Education can save lives. A child born to a mother who can read is 50% more likely to live past age 5. Number 21, every additional year of maternal education reduces the child mortality rate by up to 2%. Number 20, education can help bridge the gender gap. As of today, women constitute two-thirds of the world's illiterate population. Number 19, education often leads to better decisions. Women in Mali with even a little bit of education have an average of three children, while those with no education have an average of seven. Number 18. Benefits of girls' education also correlate with fewer instances of HIV AIDS, less genital cutting, and better overall health. Number 17. For girls in poor countries, every additional year of education past grade 3 leads to 20% higher wages. Number 16. Educated mothers are more than 50% more likely to immunize their kids. Number 15. Women with five or more years of education are more likely to seek prenatal care and assisted childbirth, which contributes to higher levels of maternal and child health care. Number 14. According to USAID, more education for girls is one of the best ways to fight hunger. It even outperforms temporarily increasing the food supply. Number 13. According to the International Food Policy Research Institute, 40% of the decrease in malnutrition between 1970 and 1995 was the result of better farming practices stemming from increased education. Number 12. If women farmers had the same level of education as male farmers, the UN estimates that crop production in Kenya could rise by over 20 percent. Number 11. If every child in the world received a primary education, then in the next decade an estimated 7 million cases of HIV could be avoided. Number 10. Studies show that rural Ugandans with a secondary education have a 75 percent lower rate of HIV than those without education. Number 9. The ability of girls to avoid HIV when educated is so well documented that education has come to be known as the social vaccine. Number 8. Education is a prerequisite for long-term economic growth. No country in history has ever achieved sustained economic growth without at least 40% of its adult population being literate. Number 7. By not offering girls the same educational opportunities as boys, developing countries lose on average $90 billion per year. Number six, for every year of additional education, a person's average earnings increase by 10%. Number five, this translates to a 1% annual increase in GDP if quality education is offered to everyone. Number four, education promotes peace. Every year that a male is educated contributes to a 20% smaller likelihood of him engaging in violent activity. Number three, education is a crucial building block for an inclusive democratic society. Number two, education helps break the cycle of poverty and promotes sustainable development in emerging nations. And number one, education is one of the most effective ways to improve quality of life in the developing world. How can we improve education? We can improve education by promoting governments to improve technology and encouraging competition among students. We fix education by adopting some of the methods that other countries who are about the U.S. have. Like in, in, in Finland, they take in collegiate sports out of actual education and they need it to an after school, after school thing. So they can focus purely on math and science and reading and make sure children have a strong... Interesting point. Well, I googled your question and I found this macroeconomics blog by some Williams guy. 
And he says that when the economies that pull employment caused by the Federal Reserve buying bonds or expansionary fiscal policy, it's easier to instate programs that improve education. So when education is more efficient, the aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, as well as the long-run aggregate supply curve, which shifts the production possibility boundary to the right, which means we can produce more goods for international trade and the economy is overall more efficient. Yeah. Um, yes. So let's tally up those points. And the winner is... We'll be right at, back after this commercial. You're watching UNICEF Television. Going to school is the right of every child, but for many children from less affluent families, it's not easy getting an education, and getting a good one is all too often out of reach. Aoife has five brothers and sisters and lives with her parents in the back streets of Solo in central Java. Her mom works as a babysitter, and her dad operates a bechak or passenger tricycle. They both hope their daughter can make it beyond these streets. The 12-year-old says she loves going to school, playing with her friends and studying her favorite subject, English. Aoife and many of her friends face a tougher challenge than most, but they do have one thing that may make the difference. These kids are enrolled in a UNICEF-assisted CLCC school, creating learning communities for children. It's enough. That's the message Cardinal Oswald Gracias wanted to share during his most recent trip to Rome. He's referring to violence against women in light of a brutal rape and death that sparked a national outcry. He says the refusal of God is partly to blame. Christ comes into our lives and that's we've got to accept him. And when you reject him, you reject his person, you reject God, you reject law, you reject the respect for the human person, and this is the consequence thing when you, when you don't accept God in your lives, and I think that's, that's so important. In addition to calls for greater protection of women, the church is taking steps to reach out to their congregations by pushing education. Starting January 27th, the Archdiocese of Bombay will launch a new campaign to get their message out. To have a one hour from six to seven or seven to eight, according to convenience, one hour of either prayer, or a symposium, or a silent procession, some program to conscientize people the, of well, the, the dignity of women and the importance of us really uh, renouncing any form of violence against women. The group created this YouTube video for the Archdiocese to help kickstart their campaign. Cardinal Gracia says it's important not just to reflect on what happened, but why and how they can change people's mindsets. He adds that they hope to influence not only parishioners, but also all of Indian society. Victoria, you've just won a new Toyota Sienna! Oh my gosh, thank you! Oh, they're taking 